观众朋友大家好，我系向新人，我哋系会菜人土北部嘅一只小镇。大家从画面都有做啲看到，你阿都爱黑白，当都爱光景分化白，咩拼音，实体实际学业太难难嘛，但真加速。下个电视台爱专访他来南马的开发，从去年时开始，年天的实验中文世界爱进行，不过多好多多，增加两多张站台。三年因是有大合的加班，总算确定对半年中爱对，底下他来南马建立市场流氓政府六十年的蔬菜地，他能上台进行专访。没想到采访团队啊，出发的前三天，警方又接到通知，谈到专家来到塔兰萨拉，搞表里只小镇来做公开的分发。虽然讲两天的距离，只两百九十几公里，不过因为都系到喜马拉雅山脚下，海拔差不多两千公尺，所以山路一弯弯一弯，路就唔好行。系讲后天交通状况好嘅时节。而时差差唔多系六到八点钟，系讲天气唔好，莫是路行又差空嘅时间，八到十点钟也非常嘅正常。不过，人系就蛮样，欢迎老观众朋友，我家里呢只机会，做啲看到，睇嚟难嘛，都分为公开分发嘅画面，当然也非常难得咧，做对睇嚟难嘛，前景，也是睇人实在，是不太难讲，另外会所进行专访。Good morning, you Holonist. Um, we are very happy and very grateful to have this wonderful opportunity uh, to connect your Holonist and the 4.5 million of Hakka people in Taiwan. The total population of Taiwan is 23 million, and Hakka is about one fifth of the population. So I wish through this interview there will be more and more Hakka people in Taiwan and even by uh, internet to make more and more Hakka people around the world they can connect and uh, make the distance closer with your holiness. Allow me to introduce you myself. My name is Paul. I'm from a Hakka village of northern part of Taiwan, Xinchu. My first question would be, yes. you live an uneasy life. You were recognized as the 14th Dalai Lama, and also you become the uh, political leader at age 16. Then your holiness established the exile government at age 24. We can look back this history. It's been very difficult. But when I look into all the footage and the videos about your holiness, I can always find a smile on your face. Are you, a Holiness, the most optimistic Dalai Lama ever? How could you make smile on your face all the time? Firstly, I'm a human being. Uh, I believe, even according to scientists, basic human nature is more compassion, compassionate. Yes. Reason. We are social animal. Any social animal and emotional level, you see, there must be something to bring together. That's a human love, human compassion. So individual human beings survival depends on the community. So we must love 
community uh, because that is basis of our own survival and happiness. That's my fundamental belief. Wherever I go, I always tell him that. And uh, seven billion human beings, basically same emotionally or mentally, physically, we are same. We all have right to achieve happy life. So, so then, you see, consider entire humanity. Of course, as a Buddhist practitioner, the animals, different sort of species of mammals, you see, we usually call mother sending being. But they have no ability smiling. Uh, we human being, uh, by nature, we have the ability to smile. Then I know, you see, according to my own experience, as soon as I born, then human language not, not yet developed. Mm -hmm. I do not know. But emotionally, by nature, I totally rely on my mother. My mother also, you see, uh, take fullest care. That's the way our life start. So, so then, uh, among the children, they don't care what's other nationality or religious belief, but so long each other play together, smiling. If you show sort of the angry face, then even ch children don't like. Dogs also, you see, when we show them a uh, smile and genuine love, loving kindness, they also appreciate. So therefore, the, according to my belief, I feel smile is very good. <laughs> and, and also, you see, one Buddhist master, I think some, some people say 8th century, from uh, Nalanda, the Shantadeva, in his writing, you see, he mentioned uh, as a practitioner of Buddhichitta, whenever you met someone, you should receive with smile. It mentioned that. I practice that as much as. I would and do I that cannot too. smile to mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, mosquito come. Bite you? Yes, wait, wait. Uh, say, there's, there's no danger, quite sure, malaria. Then I give some blood, mosquito. So they enjoy uh, my blood, and their whole body become red. Yes. Then they fly, no indication of appreciation. <laughs> I remember you emphasized um, the importance of inner peace. And also, you, uh, your holiness say, the ultimate of happiness and the joyfulness are from inner peace. Mm. Can everyone, including me, my cameraman, can we all achieve the status of inner peace? Are there any standard operational procedure to do so? Now the problem uh, existing education system. I always was telling, uh, expressing uh, the so-called modern education start from Europe. Uh, then that modern education very much oriented about material value. Uh, West the Judo-Christian tradition, simply faith towards God, 
no knowledge how to train our emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, so the education, uh, a country where just a faith, no knowledge tackle our emotion. So the modern, the Europe, Indust the, the industrialization, then uh, just the faith, uh, uh, faith or monastic sort of education, monastic or nunnery education, not sufficient. In the past, education carried by monastery or nunnery. Now industrialization developed, so that education now not adequate so therefore they uh, develop separate education institution then the responsibility of the separate newly developed education institution then the only concern is uh, the uh, development of the material including science and technology these things so modern education uh, become very much oriented about material value. So now, for example, it is quite clear. Children, uh, say, five, six, seven years, the basic human value, very much alive. The children play together. Uh, then once they join education institution, then, you see, make differences on the basis of faith and nationality. So modern education, very much uh, materialistic education. And then the children uh, from birth, you see, they uh, sort of have the potential, show other loving kindness, now that become now, what call? Kaza? Dormant. Dormant. Uh, so usually I make distinction, brain and heart. Uh, modern education only concerns brain, not warm heartedness. Uh, so through modern education, the entire community or now humanity even through modern education now they create some kind of materialistic life materialistic culture there is no room about this warm-heartedness only in this country india over three thousand years the concept of ahimsa Karuna, ahimsa means non-violence, and karuna means compassion. And you see the uh, method training our mind, the shamatha, single-pointed mind practice, and vipassana, analytical meditation. This country, 3,000 years, already developed. And Buddha himself, product of these traditions. So now modern education come from West, you see different, just a faith. Uh, therefore, the modern education alone uh, uh, not sort of sufficient to tackle our emotional problem. So now today, the uh, among the on on the on this world. You see, so many suffering actually created by ourselves. Because, you see, we only think about material value and for that competition uh, and cheating, all these corruption, all these happen. And then too much terms of desire or economy, these things. And then, uh, eventually, you see too much 
emphasis, differences, we and they, then war, killing, happened. So therefore, now I, be, uh, I often now expressing, we need from kindergarten level, while teach children the hygiene of physical, we must teach hygiene of emotion from kindergarten level up to university level. Then education become more complete, taking care about the material value and at the same time taking care about inner peace. Nothing to do with religion. Religion is something individual business. But this healthy mind, healthy body is the interest for entire 7 billion human beings. Universal value. Although these sort of method teaching our mind, these things come from religious text, but we should consider these are academic subject. Not talking about Nirvana or Kasa. Kasa. Ka. Oh, pure land. No, 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 not talking that. Just how to live uh, day by day, year by year, happy person and a happy family. That's our aim, oh, including non-believer and among the believer, different tradition. It's private business. Now, as a human being, oh, we really need more inner value, about the deeper experience about inner value, then uh, genuine world peace uh, can achieve. Without paying much attention, just uh, materially, uh, the material education, material thing, then money, only money, important, in order to make money, fight or produce more weapon, yes. including nuclear weapon. All these, I feel, related to the education system. Oh, not educate about warm-heartedness, like that. So therefore, the smile is very important. Then on top of that, if my teeth is very uh, sort of uh, very bad, then maybe better. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but my teeth are quite good. Yes. 84 year old person, my teeth, even some hard nut or something, I can't can eat, no problem. I read a sentence in a documentary film. It says, when science contradicts faith, your holiness is likely to choose science. That's more than I could imagine. Hmm. Of course, I respect all religions, hmm? all faith. However, the, among the faith, the theistic religion believe God, creator, the non-theistic religion, no creator, but self-creation. Yes. Uh, so, uh, non-theistic religious tradition, investigation, consider very important. I'm follower or student of a Nalanda tradition. The Nalanda tradition, we always emphasize investigation, research, and experiment, not faith. That's a science. Wait, 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 wait. Nalanda tradition. Yes. Buddha himself, you see, uh, told us, oh, my follower, monks, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith but rather thorough investigation and experiment. Buddha himself told us. And then, like Lusu Pusa, or the Nalanda master, they 
investigate Buddha's own teaching. And then some Buddha's teaching, he taught a different group of people who have different mental disposition. So therefore, among the Buddha's teaching, uh, we must make distinction. This Buddha's teaching uh, is true what is the view of Buddha. And this teaching he taught because of the audience mental disposition. Therefore, that we cannot accept, literally. So Nagarjuna make distinction. Lusubhusa make dis distinction. Some Buddha's teaching we can accept. Some Buddha's teaching we cannot accept because it goes against the reason. So that's, I think, quite unique. Most of the theistic religion, just the faith. Hmm? Oh, the non-theistic religion, particularly the tradition, investigation, everything, investigation. So therefore, the uh, Nalanda tradition is very scientific way, not faith, investigation. Some Chinese scholar mm -hmm. and man in China who uh, also they, uh, who notice some of uh, publication from here about Buddhist science and modern science, these things. So they uh, express Nalinda tradition is very scientific religion. It is true. And then my own experience, you see, uh, about now 40 years, I have serious discussion with scientists, mainly cosmology. Uh, we have much sort of knowledge how whole universe start and the galaxies and eventually disappear. All these quite detailed explanation, some Buddhist text. And then, uh, I think global warming also some indicated in this text. In this country, in Nalinda tradition, thoroughly sort of investigate what's the reality. They both accept, you see, there is big differences, appearances and reality. You see, purpose of that, you see, make distinction is all destructive emotion based on appearances. So in order to reduce, you see, the, or say the uh, negative destructive emotion, uh, it is very important to know the reality, not just to say, or say accept the appearances. So there is always, or say the, uh, differences, appearances, and reality. So we Buddhist uh, uh, tradition, we, we usually say two truth. One conventional level, one uh, the reality only knows through analyze, analyze. Like a quantum physicist, they analyze the object external thing, different part, different part, finally atom, nothing there. So big differences, reality and appearances. Then uh, I'm going to the second part of the question, mm -hmm. is your holiness as a friend of Taiwan? First of all, Hakka people most of us are migrants from China, mm. like 400 years ago. And of course, this is different from your holiness established the exile government here in India. My question would be, I remember in the first anniversary of you, the exile government, your holiness delivered a speech and mentioned our first priority is to settle down and continue our cultural tradition. 
That's 59 years ago. Could your holiness tell us what is or what are the special features or qualities of Tibetan culture? What make Tibetan people different from other people culturally? Tibet, uh, quite a big land. Yes. And the Qinghe province, uh, and then because uh, I Shikang somewhere, right? Oh, the Kam area. Yes. And then central Tibet and the western uh, part of Tibet. You see, little different dialect, but all you see use the scripture, which uh, actually uh, translation started eighth century. The Tibetan emperor, uh, 8th century, see, he uh, invited one Nalanda master, Shanda Rakshita. Uh, see, he introduced Buddha Dharma according to Nalanda tradition. And then also, you see, he advised Tibetan emperor, 8th century, since you have your own script script in the seventh century another you see the M Tibetan sorrow king you see uh, introduce Tibetan script a uh, copy from Indian Devanagari letter sometimes we can uh, we can pick up a few words in Ashoka pillar uh, like that so the alphabet, a copy from Indian, uh, one Indian ancient script, and then, correct, young the sages. Ka. Over alphabet and vowels. Hmm? Consonant and vowels. So, since the 7th century, the King Song Zheng Gambo married with uh, Chinese. Uh, princess and uh, with princess the Buddha statue very important Buddha statue brought to Lhasa uh, still it remain most or say the sacred or precious Buddha statue so uh, it seems to see Song Zheng Gambo 7th century he married with Chinese princess and I'm quite sure he enjoyed Chinese food. <laughs> but he found Chinese letter too complicated. <laughs> so he uh, prefer copy from Indian Devanagari and alphabet. So he developed Tibetan script. So therefore, 8th century, the Nalanda master Shanda Rakshita uh, uh, reached Tibet. Uh, he advised, uh, you have your own writing script. So now better to translate from Sanskrit mainly and Pali and maybe some Nepalese language. So mainly Sanskrit. So translation started. Altogether, about 300 volumes. So therefore, the, you see, Tibetan uh, language, something unique. Mongolia, you see, use Tibetan language. And the Himalayan sort of area use Tibetan language. Otherwise, you see, uh, no other country. So first, for the people who use Tibetan language, maybe around six million in in china the uh, in in chinese constitution recognize some area as sangsu tichu yes. sangsu tichu so altogether maybe six to seven million uh, the shizang tichu about two millions 
Mm. Okay. So, so the entire Tibetan is the same language. And in that language, I think most uh, Buddhist philosophical text available. Mm. So now that is Tibetan culture. Today, the Nalanda now ruined completely. Uh, all the knowledge of Nalanda, uh, Shandar Rishita brought to Tibet. And then he also used to advise some young Tibetan uh, sent to Nalanda at that time. Study Nalanda. Like Kusadi, Shinzang Samare. Shinzang Tangsen. Like Shinzang, also used to come from China and, and join Nalanda institution. Study. Some scholars say he met Nagabodhi, Long, Long oh, yes. the Nagarjuna's uh, senior student. When Shinzang met him, the uh, Nagabodhi, very old. Some say that. In any way, you see the uh, ha Buddhism and Hanzu teach you uh, from Nalanda. And Tibet, Mongolia in this area also is from Nalanda. So we are actually Han Sang, uh, spiritually, truly uh, spiritual brother, sister. Now differences, the, the Chinese Buddhist, they do not pay much attention about logic we Tibetan pay much sort of interest about logic. So now today, whole Buddhist world, Tibetan, only Tibetan, you see, uh, use extensively logic. Like uh, Dignak, uh, one great scholar of logician, Dignak and Dhammakiti. So the logic very important. Logic, logical approach. Always, you see, the, whenever you heard something, even Buddha's own teaching, the first reaction is why? Not yes, yes, yes. Why? So that uh, brings further investigation. Very important. So even I think the political matter or economy matter in any field, the word why is very important. Then you see uh, you develop the further investigation and try to look through different angles. Through that way, you will, you will see the reality more complete form. With that knowledge, then your method become realistic method. Unless, you see, uh, otherwise, you see, just look from one angle. And then, uh, without seeing the whole, because the, of the, whole, the holistic view, then, you see, your approach often become unrealistic approach like that. So therefore, logical approach is very, very important. So that we Tibetan kept over a thousand years, according Nalanda master, Shanda Rakshita. He himself, great logician and monk and philosopher, great. So, so after, uh, during his period, some Chinese meditator also there uh, uh, and he provide one special sort of building for Chinese meditator. This meditator very good. Then eventually some of the Chinese meditator they emphasis meditation hmm. 
some kind of thoughtlessness is important. Not study. Study is not important. Only meditation. I noticed in Japan, some Japanese uh, Buddhist monk, they also believe only meditation can become Buddha. Mm. Not necessary to study. So that is some of the Chinese uh, mm. rather, uh, they emphasize meditation is more important than study. So, according to Shandar Rashida's advice, after him, the Kamala Shila invited to Tibet and, and then uh, led debate with the Chinese meditator and Kamala Shila. And then mm, the Ch Chinese uh, uh, meditator, they defeated and they expelled. <laughs> so study is very important. Meditation, very important. But you see, in order to me meditate, meditation, uh, practice uh, meditation, you need certain sort of understanding certain sort of spiritual experience. Without that, just a close eye, remain like that. Even some birds without disturbance, then pigeon, I think, <laughs> remain like that. <laughs> we cannot say they are meditator. Okay. So we human being, this brain intelligence, we must utilize fully this intelligence for that study. Then the, our mind or knowledge scattered, that remain weak. So channelize single pointed meditation. So together, analytical meditation and single pointed meditation. So like that. So therefore, today I can say Tibet, I think, uh, kept the fully the Buddha Dharma, Buddha's teaching, Vinaya, uh, and then these, uh, what's the philosophical sort of teachings or views. So uh, now already number of, I, I think millions of Chinese Buddhists they showing interest about, you see, uh, Tibetan Buddhist tradition, which we kept over a thousand years from Nalanda tradition. So we can, uh, we can serve them, we can help them, or provided the uh, material development, the Chinese should help us. Therefore, we are not seeking separation. We are not seeking independence. The 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, Chinese emperor, Tibetan emperor, Mongol emperor, three country, independent. Now that's past. I always admire the spirit of European Union. Mm -hmm. Independent state. But they consider common interest is more important than individual sovereignty. So I also you see, feel we Tibet, in, in many centuries ago, independent country. But now modern time, we are 21st, 20th century, 21st century, much better uh, part of Tunghua Rimin Kung Ho Ko. And work together with mutual respect. Traditionally, China is Buddhist country. A lot of Buddhist temples there. In 1954, 55, I spent a few months in China proper. So I noticed many Buddhist temples. Mm -hmm. So uh, remain within the Union, and Chinese economically now very powerful. So I let them build, construct Tibet materially, and. Meantime, we can serve the Chinese people in general, and particularly the 
uh, Buddhist, uh, Chinese Buddhist, you can. And then suddenly, overseas Chinese. Many overseas, wherever overseas Chinese there, some Buddhist temple always there. And then Taiwan, uh, Buddhism, very strong. So now, uh, I'm thinking uh, not only just Taiwan, but whole the Han people, Chinese people, wherever they live. So the, now in, in this country, in India, I'm trying to revive of ancient Indian knowledge. Uh, in modern India, as I already sort of mentioned, the British introduced more modern education. That's materialistic education. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think the, in this country, in, in early part, uh, when British introduced modern education, and I think India a little bit uh, neglected about ancient Indian knowledge, which we kept now. Now this uh, must revive in this country so that India can do uh, modern education, can, can combine modern education and ancient Indian education. Indian education bring inner peace. Modern education bring material development. India can do. So then India over one billion population. Uh, China again over one billion population. Mm -hmm. Traditionally Buddhist country. And Chinese Han people usually use a hard working. Uh, so combine India and China. Uh, the big population of the whole world, like that. So I think with inner peace, some knowledge, how to tackle our emotion, that's the realistic best way to bring inner peace. Through inner peace, world peace can achieve. And men in China, unfortunately, uh, Communist, communism. But communism, uh, I feel the Karl Marx, he developed Marxism. Mm -hmm. See, that time, the industrialization in Europe, too much exploitation, working class people. Yeah. Uh, so he stand right for working class people and against exploiter, including kings, queens, like that. And then also you see he, uh, he, he developed the concept working class people are the ruler of the country, not king, not queen. And then uh, in his economy theory, equal distribution. So Karl Marx's theory, I feel wonderful. So as far as socio-economic theory is concerned, I am Marxist. Yes. Half scientist. And then one part Marxist, one part Buddhist monk. <laughs> Dalai Lama is just a name. <laughs> like that. So they are, but you see that pure Marxism spoiled by Lenin. Yes. Lenin, because of the circumstances, you see, wartime, serious civil war in Russia under the Tsar, a lot of difficulties. And uh, the First World War, this is the Western attitude also, you see, a little bit negative. So the uh, Lenin's mind more uh, wartime way of thinking. So suppression, yes. ruthlessly, and secrecy, and totalitarian. 
I feel genuine, wonderful Marxism spoiled by Lenin. And then Chairman Mozart also followed that. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question related to this. Do your holiness pay attention to the protests in Hong Kong recently? Oh, Hong Kong, oh, and when Ding Xiaoping, you see, he create one country, two system. Realistic, wonderful. Yes. Oh, uh, but now, uh, recent weeks, you see, very much sort of disturbances. So I feel uh, some worry. It's better, I think, everywhere. Peace is the best way. Hoping, hoping, right? Hoping. Hoping. Very important. You see, any problem we can solve through talk or uh, not through sort of some negative. Uh, influence under the influence of anger, no use. So a little bit, is it too much? Uh, disturbances. So I, I cannot do anything, only prayer. And then Taiwan, you preserve freedom, democracy, and most important, the ancient Chinese cultural heritage, including Buddhism, preserve in Taiwan. That's very important. So sometimes I feel the men in China, under the leadership of totalitarian system, you see, they want to liberate Taiwan. But I feel, long run, Taiwan's democracy, freedom, and the traditional the religious knowledge, these re eventually, you see, uh, with these sort of uh, tradition, I think can defeat uh, totalitarian secrecy that I think the Chinese people, uh, after Deng Xiaoping, China open with outside world. Yes. So thousands, thousands of Chinese students and also tourists, you see, have the opportunity to see uh, outside world. So, thinking, changing. Yes. Some occasion, I met some Chinese student from mainland China. Yes. I met some in Australia, some in America, and Europe also. You see, some actually, she told me, when they were in China, mainland, you see, because government propaganda, you see, they have the impression that I'm an old person, very narrow-minded. When they attend some my talk, they found that I'm not like, not like that. So they come to see me. So you see, distorted sort of uh, the propaganda, distortion, d distortion. What? So in any way, now China. Uh, more wider contact with the outside world. So China will change. The democracy is the future of the world, not a totalitarian system. Only question, question of time, mm -hmm. men in China, gradually will change. I noticed, you see, my lifetime, Chairman Mao's era, uh, there are some good points, but too much sort of Arsidi Kasa. Wang Jasin that. Tight control. Tight control. Or authoritarian system. Yes. Uh, then Ding Xiaoping opened mm -hmm. China with the outside world. So one famous sort of his expression, white cat, or black cat doesn't matter so long can mice because can catch a mice so whether capitalism or socialism or the important is people's living standard economy so so you see 
uh, I think he opened, Ch as a result of his sort of open China with the outside world, economic condition China much better. And millions of Chinese, I think including patient, they got some benefit. So then, uh, they got Ka. Jiang Zemin. Uh, Jiang Zemin. Yes. Jiang Zemin era. Three represents. Uh, quite wise. Educationist. These things. Respect. Uh, then Wu Jintao era, mm. it seems sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> then now Xi Jinping. Yes. The, say, one, you see, he, I think, quite boldly, you see, because of the struggle, corrupted official. Yes. Good. That's yes. good. Oh, now he himself, you see, of course, such huge country, over billion populated nation, uh, m many decades, just one total system, totalitarian system. So he must find difficulties, but his thinking more realistic, I think, uh, eventually, the human nature will love freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just uh, the main, beside mainland, Taiwan, same Chinese culture, same Chinese people, you see, much developed. Yes. Because of freedom. Would you like to visit Taiwan again? Firstly, we need some kind of positive sort of or say the blessing from mainland China. Ka. 1997. My first visit yes. Taiwan. I, I really very much enjoy. To do the Sinzi in the Kasa. First I met, we met, you see his sort of city, he, he show this hand. And then I also you see do that. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. I very much enjoy. And also I give some teaching. Oh Jinshin Jinshin Lama. Jinshin. In any way, I very much impressed. So then I uh, when I reach uh, Taipei Airport, yes. I express I wish some representative from Chinese embassy and watch while I, I'm in Taiwan what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, they should know. Mm. My visit purely spiritual, nothing to do with politics. Oh. So then, uh, I, at that time, I decided, Lo Nanja, good, mm, visit Taiwan. Then, I think second time, Chimburba. Okay, 2001. Oh, uh, then third time, Dosyomana. 2001 so is the typhoon, and the 681 people were killed in the southern part of right, Taiwan. Right, right, right. You console them, have spiritual support for them. Right, right, right. And then, meantime, we develop direct contact with the Chinese government in Peking. So then I feel a little inconvenient mm -hmm. visit Taiwan. So now we'll see. Uh, My contact with the Chinese uh, government in Peking, you see, unofficial contact. Some people from time to time come to uh, come to see me. Even now. Yes, I have some co contact. Yes. And then the exile government. We never use the word of uh, exiled government, but we use the word because of the central, uh, central organization. Mm -hmm. uh, 
does naturally now here in India uh, around 100,000 Tibetan. Mm -hmm. So we need some sort of one organization who look after them, uh, their settlement and education. And now in India, uh, some big historical Tibetan uh, monastic institution re-established in India, mainly in South India. Yes. So monk student, about 10,000 monk student, yes. they carry study, uh, at least in order to become scholar. 20 years they study. In the past, in Tibet, 30 years, 20, 30 years in order to become scholar. Mm -hmm. So we carry continuously that tradition. In, uh, in India, mainly in South India. So, so these people eventually, you see, can be very uh, useful for revival of ancient Indian knowledge in modern India. And also, whenever some, uh, and Taiwan also, you see, some scholar uh, uh, visit Taiwan. Yes. Uh, and Tenzin uh, Chamjin, no. You see, they annually come here and I give some teaching uh, and also ordination like that. So uh, they can, uh, in the future, I think you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can carry, I think, revival of ancient Chinese tradition and including uh, Buddhism in mainland China. I think mainland Chinese people need using this knowledge. So the Taiwanese people, you see, uh, should not demoralize. Keep your enthusiasm. Yes. Uh, and strictly non-violent way, peaceful way. And very important to keep visitors from mainland China. If Open. Oh, if they are sight, and then beyond our control. Otherwise, the Taiwanese should open. Into action. Yes. I never forget oh, my very happy, I think, three visits to Taiwan. So in future, whenever uh, some opportunity come, I'm very much willing again visit Taiwan. Thank you.